Hi guys, so welcome to this, the second part in the mini-series about moving data around on Unraid. And in this part, we're going to be looking at an excellent twin pane file manager called Crusader. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Okay, so moving on from the first part of the series where we looked at the file system, now let's have a look at moving data with a Docker container called Crusader. Now, Crusader is really easy to use, and I'd recommend it for all beginners who want to move data onto their server. And we're going to start off by taking a disk from another computer from a Windows 10 machine and transferring the data I want from that onto the Unraid server. So let's go across to the server and transfer the data. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the disk with the data to the server and it will show as an unassigned device. Okay, so here's the disk here. So I'm going to click on to mount. And if we look at the contents of the disk, this has an old Windows 10 install on it. Okay, so with the disk mounted, let's go across to the apps tab here and do a search for Crusader. Now there's three containers for Crusader here. They're all pretty much the same. I'm going to use Binhex's Crusader here. So I'm going to click on this little icon to install it. Now I'm going to make some slight changes to the default settings of how this container is set up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this path here, this forward slash media path. I'm going to remove that. Okay, and now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a few paths of my own. So I'm going to click here, add another path, port, variable, label or device. And for config type, I'm going to leave it as path. And name, I'm going to call this shares. Now for container path, I'm going to put forward slash one underscore unraid underscore shares. Now for host path, let's click onto here. And I'm going to go up a directory by clicking on these two dots. And if you remember when we talked about the file structure on Unraid, well, if you remember, this folder here, user, is where all our shares are. So I'm going to map across to here, and I'm going to click Add. Now next, I'm going to add another path. This time, I'm going to call it Unassigned Disks. And for the container path, I'm going to put forward slash to underscore Unraid underscore Unassigned. And for the host path, Again, I'm going to browse, um, click upper directory here. And if you remember where the other signed disks were, it was forward slash MNT forward slash disks. So I'm going to use that as the path. Now, an important thing to do here is when we're connecting to unassigned disks through any Docker container, we need to change the access mode from read write to read write slave. And click on to add. Now, next, I'm going to add another one. And this time, I'm going to call it remotes. And for the container path, forward slash three underscore unraid underscore remotes. And for the host path, I'm going to go up a directory again. And if you remember, the location for the remotes was forward slash MNT forward slash remotes. And again, I'm going to change the access mode to read write slave. OK, so with that done, I'm going to click on to add and click apply and pull down the container. OK, so when the container is pulled down, click on to done and let's go to the Docker tab. And now if we click on the container and go to web UI, we can go through this welcome wizard here. Just clicking OK to everything and close. And when it starts up, we come into this screen here. Now I'm going to go to these two dots here and double click on them and again. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Now we can see at the top of the list pretty much we've got one, two and three the unraid shares, unassigned devices and remotes. Now, before doing anything here, I'm going to click on this little icon here, the little person icon, and I'm going to click on add new entry, and I'm going to call this profile startup, and click OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go to settings here, and then go to configure Crusader, and for startup profile, I'm going to click on to startup, click apply, and close. Now, I'm going to close this window here, and shut down the container, and now if we restart the container, go to the web UI, we can see now that Crusader will always start straight into this path here. OK, so I connected my USB drive here and it's mounted. So on Crusader, if I go to Unraid Unassigned here, I can see the name of the disk here, the Win10. So if I go into here, here are all the files. And if I go into Users here, into Ed, 
I've got a folder here called videos where I've got movies and TV here. So I'm going to go into the movies folder here and there's a few movies here. So on the right hand side here I'm going to go into unraid shares. I'm going to choose the movies folder here. There's nothing in here at the moment. So now I'm going to select all of these files here and just drag them across onto this window and click copy here. Now I could put move here and I'll actually move them across. Actually I think I'll do that. Now this part of the video is sped up quite a lot so it won't be as quick for you. Okay so my movies are moved across into my movies share. So now here I'm going to go up a directory and go into TV here. So now here on the right hand side I'm going to go up a directory and go into my TV show share here. And again select these and now I'm going to right click and just go to move to other panel and OK. Now one of the good things about Crusader is I can actually close the actual window and the copy process will just continue. Crusader is still running, obviously if I was to shut this down it would stop. But you can leave it running for hours at a time and then come back and everything's still continuing. So it's really useful if you've got a lot of data to copy and you just want to click it and forget. Maybe go to bed, come back in the morning and hopefully everything will be done. Right, so that's my TV shows copied onto the server as well. Now I'm going to go up a directory here again and up another directory and again and any other folders I could go and pull them across to other shares. It's really easy to move the data around using this twin pane file manager. Now obviously of course if you wanted to you can also move data from share to share and if you noticed those actually moved instantly. So a really easy way to copy data around. OK so let's close this window and I'm going to stop Crusader. Now if it's impossible for you to connect the drive physically and you want to use Crusader, the easiest way to actually connect a network share is again to use the unassigned devices plugin here and click add another remote SMB share. Here I'm going to choose the Windows icon. Now here where it says choose server, if we know the IP address of what we're connecting to we can put it in here. And this could be anything with an SMB or Windows share on it. So this could be a NAS, another Unraid server or just a Windows 10 install with a shared folder. And we'll look at how to make a compatible Windows share on Windows in a moment. Now if you don't know the IP address of what you're connecting to you can click on search for servers and here Prime this is another Unraid server on my network. If your shares have password protection you can put in the username and password here. And if what you're connecting to is on a domain you'd put it in here otherwise just click next. And if you know the name of the share you can type it in here but it's much easier to click load shares and choose from there. So here on the other server I'm going to choose the movie share. Then just to finish click on to done. And now we get a little message saying success and we can see the network share listed here. So now we want to click on to mount and it should mount the share. If for any reason when you click the mount button nothing happens then it just means you've set something up wrong in the network share and you should delete it, try again, you know, check the username and password, that kind of thing. Okay so now let's go back to the docker tab and back to Crusader. Let's start it up and go to the web GUI. So here on Crusader on the left hand side I'm going to click on to here, Unraid Remotes. And we can see the share here, Prime Movies. So I'm going to go into that share and then on the right hand pane on the server I'm transferring the data to I'm going to go into Unraid Shares and then into my movie share here and from the left hand side I'm going to drag a movie across to copy it into this server here. As I don't want to move the file this time I'm going to choose Copy and so now because we mounted that share Crusader is able to copy the data across the network. Now it is possible for Crusader to make its own network connections but I think it's much easier to actually mount the network share on the Unraid server itself and then use Crusader to connect to the network that way. Now this video isn't a deep dive into Crusader. If you guys want that let me know in the comments and I'll make another video about Crusader going through all the features of what it can do. But for now we're just using Crusader as a tool to copy data to our new server. Right okay so that's that movie copied across. So now let's look at how we can transfer files from a Windows machine when we can't take out the hard drive and we just want to copy across the network. Now of course the easiest way would be to connect from Windows to one of the Unraid shares and just copy the data directly to the share. But the way I want to do it is I want to connect another remote share from the Unraid server to the Windows 10 machine. Just like we did here to the share on my other Unraid server. And yes there is a very good reason why I want to do it this way which we'll see later on in the video as to why. 
So for Android to be able to connect to the Windows 10 share, we need to go across to Windows 10 and create the share so we'll be able to connect to it from this Unraid server. Okay, so we can see on this Windows machine, there's a movie on the desktop, this six below Miracle on the Mountain here. So this is the file we'll copy across over the network. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the network icon at the bottom here. I'm going to right click it and go to open network internet settings. Now here I'm going to click on ethernet and then go to change adapter options. I'm going to click on the network connection here, just go to status and then go to details and I'm going to look at the IP address which is 10.10.20.163 now this steps optional because we don't really need the IP address but it's useful to have it anyway okay but while here there is a very important step that we do need to do we need to go to change advanced sharing options here and the first thing we're going to do is scroll right down to the bottom here and here where it says all networks let's click on this arrow to expand it and you can see here it says password protected sharing now I'm going to turn this off and click save changes and now I'm going to go back to the advanced sharing options again this time scroll down to here where it says home group connections by default it will be set to allow Windows to manage home group connections but I'm going to change this to use user accounts and passwords to connect to other computers also make sure turn on file and printer sharing is checked now it should be by default but just check everything looks as it does here so with that done click on to save changes and it's going to want us to sign out of Windows, so let's do that. Then I'm going to sign back in, and now if I go to Windows File Explorer, and this PC, and if we go into the C drive here, and then into the folder Users, and here's my username here, Ed. So inside here, there's folders like the Desktop, Documents, Downloads, Videos, all of the kind of files for the user. But I want to share the whole of my user folder, the Ed user folder here. So to do that, I'm going to right click it, Go down to properties here and then click on the sharing tab and I'm going to go down here I'm going to ignore this share button here and just click on to advanced sharing so I'm going to tick this folder to create the share everything here we can leave as it is one thing to look at here is the permissions at the moment this permission is only to read the share which is fine but if you wanted to better write into the share for any reason you could just give the permissions to allow that to be done here well I only need to better read from this so that's good enough for me so now click on to apply, OK, and close. So let's go back across to the Unraid server and scroll down to add another share. So let's click add remote SMB share here and choose the Windows icon and next. Now here where it says choose server, we could put the IP address in that we looked at earlier. And this can be useful, especially if you've got lots of other Windows machines on the network. And when you click search for servers, it's hard to know which one's the right one and because I never named my Windows 10 machine, it's just called desktop and then this alphanumerical string here. So imagine I had five different Windows machines on, all named this way. I wouldn't really know which one was what. And so that's when it would be easier to use an IP address. But I know this is my one, so I'm going to click onto it, then click next. Now here we need to put in our Windows username. Mine said, so I'm going to pop that in here and then click next. And here we need our Windows password, so put that in here. Click next again, then here if our Windows machine's on the domain, we can put in the name of the domain here. Mine isn't, so I'm going to skip this and just click next. Now here we need to click on load shares so we can choose the share to connect to. So you can see there's a few different shares here, here's the one Ed. I've also got a C share that I made earlier, so I can connect to the root of the C. But for now I'm going to click onto this one, the Ed share, and then click done. Okay, so we've got a tick and it says success, but we need to test it properly. So let's click on to mount, to mount the share. And when it's mounted, if we just click onto the name of the mount point here, then we should see the files inside. Okay, good. So here's all the folders and files inside the user ed that's been shared from Windows. They're all here. Now, if you happen to mount the share, and then you clicked on the mount point, and you saw this here, saying no listing too many files, well, that's because the Windows username and password that you've used to connect is probably wrong. So just go back and check it, put it in again, then hopefully you should be good. And if everything's good, you should be able to browse through all of the folders. If I go to the desktop here, there's that movie 6 below that I want to copy across in a minute. So let's do that now and go back to the Docker tab. And go back to Crusaders Web UI. So again, like before, go to Unraid Remotes. And there's the name of the share. And in the desktop, there's the movie. So on the right-hand panel, let's go to Unraid Shares and to the movie share. And copy the movie across into the share. So you're probably quite rightly thinking, well that's a lot of effort just to transfer one file. 
from Windows 10 to Unraid, and it would have been far easier just to go on Windows and browse to the Unraid share and copy it across that way. And yet you'll be right, it would be much easier to do that. But what happens if we've got hundreds or maybe even thousands of files which we need to transfer across the network from Windows to Unraid? For example, if I wanted to transfer this file here, this one data for Unraid, there's a whole bunch of files in here that need to be transferred across. Now obviously on Crusader I could just go to the share that I want to transfer the data to and copy it across. Or on the Windows machine itself, I could copy the folder, then go across to the network and copy it directly to the server. Now this is all very well and good, but what happens if halfway through the actual data transfer fails. So I'll just simulate that by just cancelling the copy now. So some of the files have transferred across and some of them haven't. And so it'd be difficult for me to know what's being copied and what hasn't. And to be sure I got everything, I'd probably have to start the copy again, overwriting all of the files that have already been sent across. Now that's not the end of the world if it's just a few gigs. But what happens if it's two or three terabytes? Well, that's a different story. But there's a much better way to transfer data across the network, and that's using something called R-Sync. But now as this video is going to be in parts, then I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait to the next video for us to look at R-Sync. But don't worry, you're not going to have to wait very long, because all of these videos are going to be uploaded over this weekend. But for now, if you like this video, then please hit the like button, and if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. And to all of my patrons and supporters who are watching, thank you so much guys for all of your support, I really appreciate it. And if anyone watching would like to join those great bunch of people and help support the channel, then please see the links in the description below. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.